A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. So in this short uh, animation tutorial for Papers D, we're going to be checking out the animation override nodes that have been added and how these works uh, are very similar to how montages work in normal animation. So if I have this character, I have created a running animation and I all have also set up so that the character has a, uh, a slot which you can override the animation to. So if I press my key, it will just simply use that slot and override whatever animation I'm currently doing, regardless of what I'm doing. So if I'm in the air and jumping or running, whatever, it will just play that animation that is overriding. So that is what we will be checking out how to create today. Welcome back. So in this tutorial, we are going to be delving a little bit into some new features. Well, not that new, it has been added quite a while back, uh, but to Paper ZD, which uh, emulates in a, um, a more direct fashion how montages are used for normal 3D animations. So in the past, when we have been uh, walking around with our characters and doing things, now this project is uh, the project that's been done through all the previous Paper ZD uh, tutorials. Uh, anyway, what, what we did previously, we, if we wanted to do something that was sort of like an anime montage, we would be using the, the jump nodes, which in um, the animation blueprints, they, they would uh, look sort of like this. You would have a, a jump node, which could then um, like be reached from anywhere in code. So in this case, when we pressed a button, we would jump to this specific location in the animation blueprint, and then it would follow whatever, uh, sequence of states that you had uh, to progress from there. So in this case, we could go jump. So we would start a jump. We would have a jump animation. We would have a falling animation and that we would go back to idle. Now, what we have uh, in the release for Paper ZD now is something that's called animation update. Oh, no, animation override, sorry. So how this works is I have taken the liberty to bring out the different nodes that are related to this. So by getting your animation component, your uh, papers of the animation component here, um, you have, well, uh, like not actually, but yeah, uh, from that you get your animation instance and using that you can call on a few different uh, nodes that are new now. So we have the play animation override, play animation override with callbacks. We have the stop all animation overrides and stop animation override by group. So how this works is uh, if we call one of these um, nodes, like this one, for example, let's create a variable here. Let's call it uh, animation uh, sequence and we'll make it of the type paper ZD anim sequence. Sequence, there we go. So we choose this object of reference here and then we compile and then we choose an animation sequence. So since this project already has a bunch of different animation sequences, I can just pick one of them. So like I have attacks, for example, uh, bringing one of these animation sequences in like this as a variable, we can just plug it in like so. Or we could have just chosen an animation sequence from here, of course, and, and have that run like the attack over here. Uh, so if we were to do a keyboard, uh, keyboard zero, for example, so we have on the zero key, if we press that, then we will be playing the animation override. Uh, how this works is it needs to work from a slot. And a slot is the same system that's used in normal animation uh, for uh, Unreal Engine. So if you go to your animation graph and you have your uh, anime graph available here, you can see that you have our output pose here. Similarly, in normal animation, you can have a override slot. So you can uh, type in override and you get new override slots. And this slot now you can put in in some sequence here where you want it to play. So if we were to put it here last, we know that this, this animation override will play regardless of what is being determined here from your other uh, state machines and such things. It will be the animation that's layered on top and actually supersedes everything else. And similarly to that, you can do it in, in normal anim montages. Important to note here is uh, the slot has a name, default slot, and it's uh, supported by a 
group. So this is the default group, which if we go back to our character, we can see here that the slot name here, which it's going to be using is by default, the slot that it gets when we create it. So it will be using that slot by default. Um, you can also use animation with callbacks. And here you can see that we could stop the group. That was the group that we saw previously, or you can stop all animation overrides if you want to, for some reason. Now, uh, if we were to start the game now and play, uh, our character would be having a running animation if we just keep on running. But if I press the zero key, you can see that it plays the attack animation above the the actual animation of the running so it, it supersedes that part uh, so that's how simple it is to set up it's it's not difficult at all uh, calling this node you can determine your play rate so the speed at which the animation is supposed to play and where you want to start in the animation if that is a requirement that you have for your animation and you can also get the animation length there if you want to do some code related to it maybe you wanted to wait until the animation is done and then do something or similarly Although if you want to do something like that, I would recommend instead that you use the play animation override callbacks. Uh, you get a callback when the animation is completed and you can get a callback whenever the animation is canceled for something like a, another animation override being called or something like that. Um, this is probably the, the better way to approach it because, because it becomes more event driven than having delays and such things. So uh, this is probably the one that we want to be running for the most part. Um, so yeah, so that's essentially all that you need to know about the uh, animation override. It's a very powerful um, uh, tool in uh, the already pretty uh, powerful PaperZD plugin repertoire. Uh, it does, however, allow you to, th this is not a bad thing necessarily, but uh, since this is just using a animation sequence, it doesn't really uh, limit you you could actually play whatever kind of animation you want here so it might not even be the same character if you wanted to uh, and such things anyway that's going to be all for now and um, keep on learning take care hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future that is all for now keep on learning take care